Well, this morning we are going to be looking at the president's one, years in, one year in office, uh, how it has impacted businesses in Nigeria. We have with us in the studio uh, Dr. Caesar Iyai. Uh, he's the MD CEO uh, Iyai Processing Business. They are into rubber production. We, they are also... Okay. Okay, uh, we go on now, so sorry for that. Uh, he's Dr. Cesar Iyai, is a chairman, CEO, Cesar Engineering and Construction Limited, a leader in road construction and civil engineering, uh, as well as Cesar Iyai Nigeria Limited, well specialized in rubber processing. Uh, Dr. Iyai is also the author of the insightful book, The ABC of How to Industrialize Nigeria. Glad to have you join us on the show this morning. Thank you very much. All right. Now, walk us through. Uh, one year in office of the government, you are a stakeholder as far as the business world is concerned. You've been in business for some decades now. Walk us through. How has it been for you as a business person? How has this economy affect you, mostly under President Bola Tinubu? Well, I will leave the achievements of... Uh, President Bola Abentinibu for his ministers to elaborate on. Mm. I cannot do that job for them. Mm. But for me, what I am here to talk about is how we can develop our country. Okay. I believe that um, we are not focusing in the right direction. Okay. Our attention at this moment should be how Nigeria can start manufacturing what we consume, uh -huh. made in Nigeria by Nigerians. At the moment, we have been internally colonized in the sense that you have so many manufacturing, not actually manufacturing, most of them are just semi-manufacturing. But the Chinese are making inroads into actual manufacturing because you see them in clusters where they dominate some sections. And they are doing very well. But we, the indigenous, we are not participating mm. because we have a lot of challenges that are bedeviling the system. How do you get enough electricity? Nigeria is number one in gas in Africa, number nine in the world. Therefore, if you want to produce electricity, what do you need to do that? What you need is gas, and we are number one in Africa. And yet we don't have enough power supply in the country. We, don't, we are only producing about 3,000 megawatts. By way of comparison, South Africa is producing 66,000 Egypt is producing around uh, about the same range. Mm. And then if you go and compare with the USA, for example, they are producing 1.9 billion. China is producing 2.9 billion. So look at us, just 3,000. But the important point is that I am not here to criticize the government. I'm here to talk about what we can do mm. as a nation in order for us to be able to generate sufficient electricity. Uh -huh. In my book, The ABC of How to Industrialize Nigeria, I dwell on that extensively. Because I, as an industrialist, have realized that anytime there is no power to produce, you see that the entire factory is dead, everybody is depressed. Uh -huh. But the moment there's electricity, you see there is a surge in energy. Everybody is awake again. Okay. And by the way, mm. I must tell you that um, when I reopened my rubber factory, I became so enchanted. Um, I was uplifted by the spirit of the Nigerians. I had always had this false impression that our people are not able to work. Maybe the youth. They are lazy. Well, that was the impression because 
in my community, for example, youths don't want to work. We have to go and get people from outside to come and work. But right here in Benin City, right here in the Okoro Axis, mm. I've come to realize, to, to my pleasant surprise, that you see so many people, young girls, women, young men, working 12 hours relentlessly with satisfaction and happiness. Mm. Girls that you would think will be prostituting are ready to earn uh, 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 some, I will not say meager amount now, but compared to, to something what they just earn, to support themselves. But compared to what they will earn, mm. they go on a one night stand. Um, it is easier to go and do that mm. than to do this job that is very tasky. Okay. But they are doing it, mm. and I want to assure Nigeria that we have that spirit. What we need now is the mist to harness our inner energy, yeah. our internal energy. Okay, talking about getting the means to harness our internal energy, uh, the leadership of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, they've actually cried out that if the government don't do anything, most businesses will be folding up in the country anytime soon. Now, you are a businessman who have thrived for a while now. Walk us through. How has it been for you as a person? Well, it is very clear that we are facing challenges. But I look at challenges as uh, a way of strengthening you internally and emboldening you. Mm. So I do not subscribe to the school of thought where you come and complain about what government is doing or not doing. But you look at the situation and say, what can I do? What steps can I take? Mm. I have considered even generating my own electricity. And I know that is possible also. But if we are speaking holistically for the entire country, the emphasis should be on how we can get government to encourage people mm. to invest in the power generating sector. And how do you do that quickly? If you want to build a normal power generating setup, it will take you about five to six years. Mm. And it will uh, require so much investment. But what I wrote in this book, which is very ingenious, mm. if I have to say that myself, is that if you want to start a manufacturing, take the light and generate it where there's gas. In Edo State, for example, you have gas in Gilegele, you have gas in Olobo. What do you do to generate power in order for us to talk about industrializing Edo State, mm. starting with Benin City? Because in my book, I wrote it that all the state governments, they can have clusters in the Niger Delta where you have gas, where you have everybody will set up their own manufacturing centers, mm. where indigenous of that state, maybe Kaduna, maybe Kano or whatever, they will be encouraged to come and in, put their factories there, where it will be known to be factories that are being managed by people from Kano State, for example. But why are they there? Because we don't have the means to take gas to wherever destination they to are at it. the moment. Mm. However, we can, in the immediate term, have gas right here in Benin or in Niger Delta, any state that you prefer. In, in my own case now, it's Edo State. Mm. In my own case, it is Benin City. So where we have gas is Olobo, because we have access to it. Why can't the federal government or Edo State government or a consortium of investors mm. think about how to have this mobile generating plant? You have a general electric plant called LM, that's land-based. Uh, mm. And then the TM, because you have land and marine, and then you have the trailer-mounted TM. 2,500, that is the specification. It can generate 25 to 32 megawatts. And you can synchronize them. Some years back when they had a tsunami mm. in Japan, the electrical generating system was completely flattened. And they used the Boeing 747 to fly in LM 2500 and TM 2500. And within the weeks, 
restore power to Japan. Okay. Now, it seems from your analysis, uh, do you think power is the only problem business owners are facing in the country? There what are, what there, other? There are many problems, but we can't solve all the problems at a time. When we are talking about so many things at the same time, it becomes difficult for us to actually achieve something. We must focus our energy on achieving certain things. What I'm talking about power is that mm. the moment you have power and it's generated in an inexpensive way, you are opening the entire economy to manufacturing. And if you want to manufacture anything, what you need is electricity. Why I am focusing on this LM2500 mm. or TM2500 is that within a period of about six to two weeks, uh, two months, mm. because you fly it in, you mount it, and you have instant power. Do not waste your time trying to take that power to Benin City. As they say, if the mountain will not go to Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ should go to the mountain. Mm. Where power is, is Olobo. Therefore, where the industry should be located should also be Olobo. Once you have that power generating system installed, mm. you can synchronize about 10 or 20. If you pick the minimum power generating of that LM2500 to be 25 megawatts, mm -hmm. times 10, you already have 250 megawatts. Times 20, you already have 500 megawatts. Okay, now. And mm -hmm. when you have that, you can immediately embark on a project where uh, manufacturing centers, industries where things can be manufactured. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the telephone in your pocket can be made here in Benin City if you have light? Because what do you have in your telephone? Silicon. Mm -hmm. Silicon is the glass. That's white sand. The entire uh, uh, capsule there is silicon. The only other thing you have there is aluminum and some plastic. So basically, in your telephone, you have two primary elements, silicon and aluminum. I think you have the raw materials here. Yes. When you talk about sand, sand is silicon. It's a fancy name for mm. sand, silicon. Okay. It's everywhere. But the high quality of silicon, if you want to make telephone chips, computer chips, the processors, uh, the quartz, they are very abundant in Okbula, in a donut. Oh. What you need now is how do you transform this innate substance from just sand, from just silicon, from just quartz, to a telephone. Oh to a solar panel. I want you to know that a country like Japan is completely devoid of resources. Yet, Japan is number three. As far as production is concerned. Four in the GDP. Oh. You have the United States as number one at 28 uh, trillion. You have China at 18 trillion. And then you have Germany and thereafter, you have Japan. Yet, Japan does not have any natural resource. The vehicles that we drive here in Nigeria oh. take an SUV um, 570 Lexus that sells for about $100,000. What do you have in it? It's iron. It's at least 70 to 80% iron. What happens? Japan, they come and export, buy iron ore from maybe Australia or from Guinea oh. and take it to Japan and they process it from transforming it from just mere iron ore. In our own case now, if we want to produce anything, we shouldn't be talking about how we can use Ajakuta, because people always talk about Ajakuta. Ajakuta is a, done, is, is a failed project. Government should not... You think government cannot revive Ajakuta? It is not possible to revive Ajakuta. It's not possible. It is not possible. Okay. When people talk about Gile Gile, mm. I said it's not possible. But let me tell you why Ajakuta is not possible. Ajakuta is not possible because 
our iron ore is 33 percent iron content hmm. if you want to use our iron you have to beneficiate it which is very expensive because you are going to use coke okay let's let's quickly break in inside this discussion uh in southeast we have someone producing cars and he's trying to do his best and if you look at some of the quality of the cars uh, the let me tell you we are not producing cars in nigeria we are assembling cars okay there's in a, a difference between manufacturing and assembly we have, been, we have been assembling for more than 40 years, 50 years. It's not time for us to graduate, to maintain the So the man in Southeast is just assembly vehicles. It's, it's not manufacturing vehicle. You can quote me. Okay. Innocent. Mm. He's doing well, but government should encourage him to move further. Instead, they were chasing him in his pajamas. People would go over the fence, the FCC to go and arrest him because the man was adding value by bringing vehicles knock down vehicles to Nigeria. It's adding value because he employs Nigerians to assemble the vehicles. So that is very good. Okay. But what do we do beyond that? We should be able to manufacture something. The point I was making earlier mm. was that you have Japan, number four in the world, in without raw material. Russia is number one in the world in terms of raw material, in terms of land size, and it doesn't even rank among the tenth largest economy in the world because they are only manufacturing mm. nuclear weapons and tanks. Okay. Whereas, if you look at Japan, mm. how much does it cost to buy the raw material to make one SUV? Not up to 3,000. But when you take it through the process of manufacturing, you start to add value from stage to stage. Mm. That is why you can see a country that doesn't have any raw material is ranking number four. Okay. If we can start manufacturing things in this country, oil will become absolutely insignificant. Okay, walk us through now. Looking at your expertise in the uh, road construction engineering um, line, how do you think uh, we can improve our road network in the country, which seems to be another problem uh, affecting business owners? Primarily, if we want to improve our roads, if you look at what is going on, we are focusing on, on bitumen, which if we were having sufficient refinery, mm -hmm. it would be inexpensive because it's a byproduct in a fractionation uh, system. But because we have to import it, it's not very expensive. So just to answer your question very quickly, we have the raw material to do it, but we are not able to do it because we are not able to plan. If we want to do good roads, my experience has taught me that we should focus on interlocking. Mm. Look at all the roads that were done with interlocking stones in Benin today. They are so still intact. 25 years ago, 24 years ago, they are still functional. If there's a problem with interlocking, just remove the interlocking stone and um, go and do another job again on the sub base, you lay them back. You don't have to bring any new materials to it. Mm. But what I see them do today, uh, the ground is already strong. Why are you putting iron rods on the ground, for Christ's sake? You are increasing the expenses unnecessarily. Mm. The ground is already very strong. Why can't you just do it a lucky stone and place them on the ground? If you do that, you can reduce the cost of road construction yeah. by a quantum. And you now have so many people participating. Because I wrote here in the book that there is no country in the world that was industrialized by foreigners. Yeah. It was done by their indigenous. Why would Chinese want to come here and manufacture vehicles that they already manufacture in Nigeria, in, uh, in China, and then you produce it here and send it to China. They will not do that. It is we who will have to sit down and recognize what we need mm -hmm. and how we are going to achieve it. That purpose cannot begin unless we have sufficient uh, production of electricity, which God has given us the resources to do. We're just waiting to be able to find the right leadership. Well, you think we are not utilizing it? we are not utilizing our resources. When you take your raw material and just sell it off, you are selling away jobs. 
What you need to do is to take those raw material and add value to it. When you add value, you now see that you are now increasing your level of efficiency. Look at what is going on. That vehicle we are talking about, or even aeroplane, what is an aeroplane? An aeroplane is aluminum. The fuselage, the turbines, everything is aluminum. Yet, it is very expensive. Why? Because they have added value, which we can also do here. But we are not making any effort to start to add value. In this book, I was looking at it when I was writing it some three, four years ago during the COVID era. And people were asking me, how are you going to rate the performance of a president? I said, my own definition of performance is anybody that's able to serve and during his tenure is able to governize the private sectors to produce what we used to import from the elements. I will start producing it from here. Not to assemble things. Mm. From the elements. There are 118 naturally occurring elements known to science. The other ones are made in the laboratory. Mm. And these elements are what you will use to manufacture things. We must have the capacity to met the element. Okay. And you can't do that mm. without electricity. Okay, let's return back now. Uh, we are living in a time where the economy is very hard. Our cost of living is actually choking the living at this point. Uh, the TUC and labor union, they are all trying to see how to push the government to see how to increase uh, the minimum wage of the average Nigerian worker. Uh, that is still on the pipeline. But so many persons have been advised to go into business. That uh, a business now, going into business or starting up business, look like the bailout now for every civil servant. But the question is, some motivational speakers, they've come out to say you don't really need money to start a business, you just need an idea. Now, walk us through, help us. We have young entrepreneurs who might want to go into business just to support themselves in this trying time uh, of our economy now. What says you? What is your advice to them? Look, what are the businesses that we have in, in Nigeria? Hotels? Boutique, pepper soup joints, um, buying and selling. Any, can you name any other one? You've just named some of them. That is it. Mm. That's, that's the end. So what you are telling people to do actually is to see how they can open a boutique. Okay, that is good for individuals, but is it good for the system? For the system, what we need is our own means, where people will be able to start manufacturing things. If you go to India, mm -hmm. every neighborhood, there's a factory. If you go to China, every neighborhood, there's a factory. It's only here, what you see, only churches. In the Okoro Axis, there are more than 50 churches, not any a, a single factory except my own. In the whole of that axis. In the whole of that axis. That is a shame because everybody is just praying. Look at the Israelis, there are 15 million people across the globe, yet they are able to fight the Arabs because they take the, the Torah, their religion is, is Judaism, the first five books in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, the Talmud, only five books, so that's what they read. They read it, put it down, and go into the laboratory and do science. And that is why if you look at the Lobo Noret in science, dominated by Jews, because they are focusing on Jew religion and science uh -huh. simultaneously. They are not mutually exclusive Nigerians. We should bear that in mind. Science and religion are not mutually exclusive. They work together. Uh -huh. You can pray all you want. If the generator goes off now, because we are heavy generator working, if it runs out of diesel, that is it. If you like bring 20 pastors to pray, you are not going anywhere you diesel until you, to start until you put diesel there. Mm. If the generator is broken, until you repair it, you can't pray it to, to work. So no amount of anointing oil will bring it back? No, no, no. no. It's okay. all complete. A waste of time. We have been deceived. 
there's God, believe in God, and love God and love human beings. That's what we, we preach in our church. Mm -hmm. Whatever religion you want to subscribe to, whether you are a Muslim, practice it. But give enough time for science, give enough time for manufacturing. We cannot continue to okay. depend on mm -hmm. only wishing things to happen. Okay, fi finally now, we, we need to go now as we are actually running out of time. What's your vision for Nigeria economy in the next four years? I pray that... But first of all, let me quickly congratulate uh, President Bola mm. I heard that he has uh, removed that obnoxious national item. But they are talking about uh, Nigerian heroes, a country where you don't have heroes. They are singing about uh, heroes. So you are in support of the new bill? Look, it's the best, it's in my book. Mm. Because I said, there are no heroes in Nigeria. You have, in Nigeria, people that went into government when they were poor and came out rich. Such people are not heroes. So when you say you are celebrating, uh, using a national item to celebrate heroes, there are no heroes. But the old national item, it says, though tribes and tongues may differ in brotherhood we stand. That is a national item. That is a national item. So I want to congratulate him on that. Okay. But very quickly, let me your, answer your, your question. Vision for Nigeria. Uh, for Nigeria is the that we should generate enough power in clusters. Mm. Don't take that power to the city. Let the power be where it is being produced, where it is generated, okay. and put factories there okay. where we can start manufacturing finished products from the elements. Take sun, manufacture glass. Take sun. Manufacture solar panel, take sun, manufacture a telephone. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Cesar Yai. I'm afraid time is not always our friend, but we'd like to have you again on the show so that we can have more engagement with you. Thank you so much.